Karate friends, welcome to Classics in Color. My name is Mark Graves. I try to put a video out every Sunday, so please subscribe if you're interested in that. And thank you so much to everyone who is subscribed. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about some of my favorite wrong facts about animals from the ancient world, because who doesn't like talking about animals? So most of these facts are coming from a fellow named Pliny the Elder who wrote a natural history. So he has, he has all kinds of stuff in this book, but I'm going to be mining it specifically for animal facts today. Uh, so I'm going to start out with his facts about bears. So uh, top five facts about bears. One, bears have sex in missionary style. I bet you did not know that. Uh, it's one of the reasons that Romans considered bears more anthropomorphic, I guess, than many other animals. They thought there was something more going on there because they, they, they thought bears had sex in a more human way than doggy style <laughs> in, than in, in the animal way. Um, second fact about bears, uh, they lick their cubs into shape. So the idea is that when bear cubs are born, they're basically a, just a shapeless lump of flesh. <laughs> the, yeah, just completely shapeless. And the mother bear has to lick them into shape. Like she sort of sculpts them somehow. I don't understand it, but it's fascinating. Uh, fact number three, they cannot be woken from hibernation. So even if you go in with a spear and just go at it, won't wake up. Uh, number four, bear grease prevents baldness. So if you rub that in there, you'll be good fellas. And five is that bear flesh will continue to grow even if it's cut off the bear. <laughs> it will continue to grow somehow. Uh, so that is very strange. It seems to be that you would just have like an infinite food supply then at that point. Like, that's pretty magical. That's, that's some powerful stuff uh, from the bears. Then I'm going to read to you a passage about bears from this natural history because you, you, didn't, you need to hear the whole thing. <laughs> so he says, on coming out uh, from hibernation, they devour a plant called wake robin to loosen the bowels, which are otherwise constipated. And <laughs> I don't know how you know that a bear is constipated, but whatever. And they rub their teeth on tree stumps to get their mouths into training. Their eyes have got dim, which is the chief reason why they seek for hives so that their face may be stung by the bees to relieve that trouble with blood. A bear's weakest part is the head, which is the lion's strongest. Consequently, if when hard pressed by an attack, they are going to fling themselves down from a rock, uh, they make the jump with their head covered with their forepaws, which is really cute and really sad. And in the arena, uh, they are often killed by their head being broken in by a buffet. And the Spanish provinces believe that a bear's brain contains poison. So there you have Pliny the Elder on bears. And I love bears and these facts. I love them as well. So next up is hedgehogs. Uh, there's not as much about them, so I'm just going to read you one quick quote. Uh, hedgehogs also prepare food for winter. The hedgehog itself uh, protects against hunters. And fixing fallen apples on their spines by rolling on them and holding on one more in their mouth, uh, carry... One, and holding one more in their mouth, carry them to hollow trees. The same animals foretell a change of wind from north to south by retiring to their lair. Uh, so I love picturing a porcupine like trying to reach with its spines to like stick an apple on itself. And then I don't know how it gets the apple back off. Like does it have to like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand. But I, I love trying to understand. Then horses. So there's a bunch of facts about horses. Uh, fact number one, they will pass weapons up to their riders. So horses are commonly used in cavalry and war. So if you're riding your horse and you pass like a, somebody's spear sticking in the ground, apparently the horse will grab the spear and then like hand it back to you. <laughs> and then you can, you can use the spear. Uh, you know, somebody out there may have actually trained their horse to do that. I don't know. I want to see somebody do that. Uh, the foals apparently are born with like a little pouch of something attached to their head. And if the mama horse eats it, she will love her baby. If she does not eat it, she will not love her baby. She will reject it. And if you take this little pouch, you can make a love potion out of it. 
which is kind of creepy because it's supposed to like inspire motherly love so it's kind of weird that you can use it to inspire sexual love but there you go um Fact number three, horses will race by themselves if their driver is thrown. So chariot races were a huge deal in ancient Rome in particular. Uh, there's the famous Circus Maximus in Rome that you can still kind of see today. It's really cool. And the chariot teams uh, would get their horses and they would race in chariots. And apparently if the rider was thrown, the horse would still keep running because they loved racing so much. Uh, or maybe just because they were terrified. I don't know. But that's that's the myth that Pliny tells us. And then uh, they can be trained to perform a sort of ballet, apparently, to music. So Pliny tells us that one time there were these horses that were so well trained that they could dance. Which I have actually seen dance uh, horses kind of do that before. So maybe that's, maybe that's realistic. And then finally, sometimes, sadly, they commit suicide when their riders die. <laughs> Uh, so there's a quote about this as well. Uh, when King Nicomodes, <laughs> when this fellow was killed, his horse ended its life by refusing food. And Philarchus records that when Antiochus fell in battle uh, in one of uh, the Galatians, uh, Cantaratus caught his horse and mounted it in triumph, but it was fired with indignation and taking the bit between its teeth as to become unmanageable, galloped headlong to a precipice where it perished with its rider. So basically some guy killed the horse's rider and then got on the horse and the horse was like, F you, and just ran off a cliff and died together. So it's kind of cute and kind of, kind of really sad also. So finally, oxen. Uh, oxen are super important in the ancient world, so Pliny doesn't leave them out. Uh, they were very valuable on farm as a beast of burden, so you would plow with them and they could carry a lot of stuff. Occasionally you would eat them, but only for very special occasions. You know, once or twice a year there'd be a big festival and you might sacrifice an oxen and you would all feast on it together. It was a big important event. Also, if you were uh, the caretaker of the oxen in a palace or a household, then you would outrank all the other shepherd people. So if you were a shepherd of sheep or of pigs, you were below the ox guy. So very important animal. Uh, one of the funnier facts about them is that apparently they graze while walking backwards and some varieties can only graze while walking backwards. I don't know if I've ever seen that. <laughs> Let me know if you have. Uh, you can also fatten them up, like increase their, their mass uh, by washing them with hot water. And then, okay, this one is really sad. If you cut a hole in their hide and blow air in, uh, you will all, you can fatten up an oxen. So I guess there are people out there who were like blowing into their poor mutilated oxen. Very sad. But then on the other hand, uh, Pliny also says that because oxen were so valuable and they were also considered a sort of friend, um, sort of like dogs are now, but as a farmer, you'd be out working with this oxen all day long. He might kind of become your buddy. Uh, so because he was valuable and because he was a friend, sometimes people who killed oxen were condemned to death. So Pliny mentions a couple stories where, where that happened, where you could be executed for killing a cow, <laughs> which uh, to us maybe seems kind of rid ridiculous, but in that context, I think I, I can kind of sympathize with that. So those are some of my favorite bad facts about animals from the ancient world. Uh, I might do another video like this at some point in the future. So comment below if you like this one and if you have any suggestions or requests for next time. Thank you so much for checking this out. Again, this was Classics in Color with Mark Graves. Mm -hmm.